Snowman here, and next time we're going to talk about cold weather gear. Jackets, like this one, and boots. But this time I'm going to show you how to make a fire in the woods. Very simple. And to do that, we're going to go into those dark, forbidding woods. Now let's go home. I'm just kidding. <laughs> This looks like a good spot to set up camp and build a fire. It's flat. It'll be easy to find a place to sleep that's comfortable. Got plenty of fuel in the area. It's uh, more or less isolated, so you don't have to worry about uh, being attacked by bears. Uh, of course you might. Always bring a gun. Let's go get some fuel. It's been very cold lately. It's been snowing and raining and freezing and uh, you can see that this tree is absolutely soaked and uh, this is useless for starting a fire. Right next to it is a tree that has some dry bark, dry twigs. And uh, I mean, I can't explain why this one is dry and this one is soaked, literally soggy, wet. And this one's dry. Can't explain it, but I can use it scrape off some bark and then break off some dry twigs. The small tips start a lot easier and then you need some larger ones. That's just to start. This is what we're going to use to kindle the fire and then the larger pieces that we feed to the fire after it's started is tinder. You want to have all of your pieces of wood, all of your tinder uh, ready. Not be trying to uh, to break up your pieces and get everything organized while it's already underway. Have everything ready so you can react to the fire as it's trying to grow. Preparation is key. It's always the case. This is rotten. This will never burn. On this one, it's just the outer bark that got soggy from the rain. The wood is dry. It's been dead long enough to dry inside. The inner bark of a tree is what carries all the nutrients up into the tree. The inner bark is already dry. So this is dead wood. It's been dead long enough to dry, but not long enough to, to rot yet. So this is good. Figure out a way to break it off and then get it back to the camp. We'll try the simplest thing first. It takes a while to get a big log like this burning. I'll go ahead and pull off the bark to get to the drier part underneath. The bark is what's kind of wet. I'll get it started anyway. Now I'm going to stack the smaller pieces under here and then slightly larger pieces on top of that and then larger sticks on top of that. Fire needs three things. Fuel, oxygen, and heat. We're going to Build this fire around this log and try to get it to absorb as much heat as possible. The water that's in the log is going to evaporate and cool it. Once that water has gone, then this log can burn. So I'm going to have it absorbing as much of the heat of the early fire as possible. By tonight, this will be burning. That'll be important because tonight it's supposed to drop down into the mid-teens uh, Fahrenheit if you're in uh, the United States. And uh, for those of you who use uh, Celsius or centigrade, that's uh, everybody else in the world, it's going to be about negative 10. I'm building on top of this rock just to make it easier to demonstrate. If you were doing this for real, you'd probably pull this rock out to get some dry soil underneath or stack up some pieces of wood and then build a fire on top of that network of wood, a mesh, cross mesh like this. This is a limestone rock and uh, as it heats up, it will crack which is not really a problem, except occasionally it really blows and it will scatter your fire and uh, could hit you, so it's dangerous. The key to building a fire is preparation. There's a lot of ways to start a fire. You can, uh, you know, you can rub sticks together and I'll demonstrate that someday. Okay, here's a striker. That's one way to start a fire. It's good to have as a backup, 
But I'm telling you people, the easiest way to start a fire is with one of these. A corollary to that is you can go around and look for dry tinder all day long, or you can use newspaper, or in this case, paper from the phone book. Just keep some in your bag. It's so light. It's easy to have, and it only takes one sheet. I have three here, so I have three days worth of fire starter. It pays to know all of the survival tricks. You need to know the things, how to build a fire and so forth if you don't have a, li a lighter. Know those things. The best way to survive is to be prepared and to make your life as easy as possible. Have plenty of food, have plenty of water, have a lighter and make it easy for you. So what you want to do when you build a fire like this, you don't want to make it too dense, you know, because then air can't flow around your fire. You want to make it loose and pack all this stuff around your fire loosely, close enough to get the heat and ignite, but loose enough that plenty of air can get to it. Be ready to blow if you need to. Breeze picked up a little bit and gave me a hand. This is about the right length for a stoker. I'll keep that aside. Some of these are pretty wet. It'll take a while for them to dry. Ones that are already dry, I put into the bottom. Feed this fire. I'm making a wall on the back side of the fire. Uh, the back with respect to the breeze because it will blow the flames into these pieces of wood and dry them make less work for me. Just for fun, I want to show you how to use some lint and a striker to start a fire. You wouldn't use this much normally, but we're going to just for fun. So you can see, this fire started with lint and a striker, and you can carry it um, easily in your everyday carry bag or in your backpack when you go camping. Just have it with you at all times. It's another backup method for start starting a fire. I'm going to let this die down because uh, we don't want the fire here anyway. But uh, now you know how it's done. This fire looks small, but I'm telling you that I can already feel the heat here, and uh, it's putting out a lot of calories. Now this is enough to keep you alive, and it was quick and easy. I have no problem cooking something to eat, getting myself warmed up, and uh, be prepared for the journey back to my base camp because I don't know about you, but if I have the choice, I'm not gonna spend the night outside in negative 10 degrees Celsius or the mid-teens. Um, part of uh, surviving in the wilderness is uh, being prepared. And the way I've prepared for living out here in this wilderness is uh, to build a house out here. <laughs> That's where I'm spending the night. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, next time, boots, jackets.